Welcome to In Context, coming to you from Vine Sanctuary, an LGBTQ-led farmed animal refuge in Vermont. We bring you conversations with authors and organizers exploring the connections between animal advocacy, race, gender, and social justice to help put today's big questions in context. Hi, and welcome to In Context. I'm Patrice Jones, coming to you from the grounds of Vine Sanctuary in Vermont, an LGBTQ-led farmed animal sanctuary, working for social and environmental justice, as well as for animal liberation. Today, I am so excited because we have uh, two artists, the artist collective known as Louder Than Words, who are gonna be talking to us about their previous artwork and about the turn in their artwork toward animal advocacy. Before I introduce S.A. Bachman and Netta Morepor, I want to tell you about an animal I know they love too, and that's a cow called Autumn, who has been living here at the sanctuary for many years. Autumn, came to the sanctuary after 12 years at a dairy farm, during the course of which nine calves were taken from her. She was in very, very bad physical condition when she first got to the sanctuary, but her spirit was absolutely unbroken. And I'll never forget the look in her eye, full of fire uh, when I first met her. Many years later, Autumn is the absolutely undisputed matriarch of our front pasture herd of cows and goats and sheep. She is an elder. She's more than 20 years old, which is quite old, uh, but she still involves herself in all of the workings of the sanctuary. When she first got to the sanctuary, she had never met mammals other than humans and cows. And she was a little bit afraid of the sheep and sort of stayed away from them. But then uh, about two years later, a group of goats and sheep arrived. And like many people, Autumn discovered the joy of goats. She fell for them immediately, and she is now the official goat groomer at Vine Sanctuary. She also has had the opportunity to adopt calves who have come to the sanctuary after they were discarded by dairies. First, she adopted a calf called Gemini, and right now she's Oh, tearing her hair out at the adolescent behavior of her newest adoptee, Mocha, uh, who is acting like many adolescents act. Uh, uh, I don't want to jinx it by saying too much, but it's possible that the next project of the Louder Than Words Art Collective is going to involve telling Autumn's story in some way. So let me go ahead and introduce the women behind Louder Than Words, S.A. Bachman and Netta Moripour. Welcome, and I'm so glad that you joined us today. We're delighted to be here. Thanks for choosing. Yes, it's, it's an honor. Your work is so exciting, and I want people uh, to learn about your work because I think that activists of, of any kind working on any problem uh, could use more imagination and learn to think more imaginatively about how to create change. So before we talk about your turn towards animal advocacy, I'd love to talk some about some of your previous projects, one of which was called Women on the Move. Can you tell us about that project, what you did and what you were trying to do with it? Netta, why don't you go? Sure. (laughs) Well, I think the idea started from where um, we thought that we should just create our own space because it was um, 
you know, time, um, time wise, it was a little frustrating for us to find a space to um, create art that would be safe enough for survivors to step in, but also um, we wanted to make the space available for the public that would be accessible in another way, other than having, you know, the show in an art gallery or a museum. So we created, um, recreated like a space um, from a six, six foot truck. Is that, was that, am 16. I wrong? 16, right. 16 foot truck. Um, so in, 26, 26 actually. Oh, right. In Cleveland was 16 and here it was 26. Um, into an art exhibition and a resource center um, that would, um, you know, we, we had free materials to give away, um, artist design posters. And I think you can see one of the post posters behind essays um, uh, on, on the wall in her studio, the red one, which Actually, was- Actually, both of them, you're right. Oh, right, both of them. <laughs> Hard for me to read the other one. Um, so yeah, we had um, videos and um, installations inside the truck and we would drive around um, the cities. We went to Cleveland, Ohio and um, Los Angeles, California. And then here in, um, I'm located in Boston. So here in Boston, Massachusetts. And the, the project, uh, the notion of being able to be out in the world and take education to people rather than having people come to us was a really important aspect of the project. And we conducted some workshops inside the project. And we also, everywhere we went, collaborated with an organization. So for instance, in Cleveland, we worked with the Rape Crisis Center and so forth. So y'all just went to these cities, collaborating with a local nonprofit uh, focused on violence against women. And you had this truck or bus that's colorfully painted. And then you've got materials, both art and advocacy materials that when people are surprised to see the truck, then they can come up to and engage with you and walk away with art and walk away with information, both. Exactly. The billboard has, uh, the truck has billboards designed on three sides. And then the interior is built out with drywall and so on. So it's a, as Netta described, a kind of real space. And we did many things in there. As she mentioned, uh, we had situations where survivors came in to speak with us and they've never spoken to anyone about their trauma before. Uh, we ran workshops for teens. And always at the center of what we do, and also this was true of my prior collaborative, we give out all our materials at no cost. Wow. And how did people react to this? Um, I think we were expecting a lot of maybe like surprising reactions, but we didn't actually. Everyone was super supportive and um, very generous in sharing their stories. One of one of the stories that I remember was a student who, um, the the red poster that you see behind essay is the victim blaming poster. It, it kind of combines all the um, things that people say to a victim might say to a victim of um, sexual assault or domestic violence, and at the end it says stop blaming the victim. Um, and the story includes a student who got this poster from us and put it on her dorms wall. Um, and she emailed us um, and said that, you know, it just means so much to me that I wake up every morning looking at this poster and remind myself that it wasn't my fault. Um, so, you know, small kind of um, stories like that. I think that's kind of the, <laughs> the fuel to our engine. Um, versus art reviews and things like that. Um, and we had a lot of men um, that would, you know, share their stories with us as well as just um, students and, you know, teenagers. And yeah, it, it's been it, it's been a very overwhelmingly kind of um, powerful experience. Wow, I am so impressed. Uh, every time I even think about this project. And, and if other people feel the same, then I really encourage you to uh, visit Louder Than Words online, uh, which you can find through S.A. Bachman's website, uh, and look for the Women on the Move project uh, to see 
the posters uh, that they gave out and the other materials and learn more about this amazingly creative way uh, to actually make a difference in the lives of survivors of sexual and domestic violence and also to encourage people uh, to, to think differently uh, about that. S.A., you mentioned um, a, a, a previous collaboration, uh, uh, which I think was called Think Again, which I almost just said, because uh, you were provoking people to, to, to think again. And that was with uh, uh, David uh, Atea. Mm -hmm. And then, and Netta, I know that you have also worked in a previous collective, the Park Collective uh, with Puya Afshar. Uh, what is it about working collaborative? So, so am I right in thinking you both prefer working collaboratively? And if so, what's, what's that about? Uh, well, as the senior member of the Intergenerational Collective, I will take this question first. Um, I worked solo for a number of years, and I'll also say that my, my other background rather as, than fine arts is also in sociology and media studies. And for me, creating artwork was always about generating conversation. In fact, the work I applied to graduate school with was in fact documenting conversations. Uh, and then I very quickly came to realize that conversations don't really happen much in art galleries, museums, alter even though I, from the get-go, I was always committed to showing in public spaces like the local Y. And so, I was already beginning to try to rethink things. This is in the mid nineties. And then I had the very good fortune of meeting David and think again emerged quite simply because the two of us were really pissed off about what had happened to pride. And we felt as though it had lost all of its spunk and politics. And it was all about citizens bank and swag. So we made some stickers and went to Pride, never ever imagining that we would be collaborating for another 12 years. Um, I'll also just say that Think Again bears upon Women on the Move in that in terms of your comment about working imaginatively, needing to be imaginative, uh, our first truck project, David and I did, and we we created that truck project because at the last minute, a series of billboards that we were supposed to put up was censored. So we had to figure out, well, what are we gonna do now? Um, so bottom line is since 1997, I have worked strictly collaboratively. And basically I feel as though I'm just not very interested in talking with myself anymore. I just would much rather be in conversation with somebody else who's smart and talented. And it's just the classic cliche of two minds are truly better than one. And in the case of uh, Netta, we're really of a different generation. David is younger too. I have to let give credit for David being younger too, but Netta and I are truly of a different generation. And of course, grew up in different countries. So her perspective is just invaluable to me. I learn from her all the time. Wow. Um, Netta, I totally wanna to hear what you think about collaboration too, but I just need to draw out what Essay just said about the billboards and the trucks. So what you're basically telling me is there came a time when you were gonna put up some billboards and the billboards got censored. And then you and David were like, nah, <laughs> we're going to show these billboards anyway and decided to rent or buy a truck and put the billboards on them and just drive around with them. I yeah. love that so much <laughs> um, and would love to see other people replicate it. But Netta, I want to invite you to, to talk about your feelings about collaboration as well. Yeah, sure. Um, I totally relate to all the things that SA mentioned. I'm also not interested in what goes on in my head and having a conversation with myself in my studio. Um, I've always, I, I was raised like um, kind of in, in a way to um, use my skill sets to um, give others voices. Um, you know, I was born and raised in Iran. My dad was a surgeon and 
he um, always basically contributed his practice to helping others without, um, you know, uh, charging them. So he would like see patients for free. So I was kind of raised in a household that um, understood that I could use my skills to help others. Um, and that's been kind of the focus in my life and in my practice. Um, and when I moved here, uh, there was this whole new world that, you know, I understood that I could make work and put it out in the public, you know, coming from Iran and not being allowed to uh, make any political art or talk about any social political things. It was just really um, overwhelming for me to kind of um, realize that, okay, like I can do this here. And it was really exciting. Um, so I, I've never, I've never been interested in the art world in the kind of commercial art world, or um, as much as I respect, you know, art galleries and museums, um, I feel like there's a whole nother audience, you know, I was, I was never um, allowed to, I didn't have access to art books, I never went to museums and galleries in Iran, uh, because there were not that many, there are a lot now, uh, so it was really, it did the kind of access to art and that kind of different knowledge was really important for me. Uh, and again, I think what Essay said about Think Again's work, um, I think the same thing happened with Louder Than Words and even Women on the Move, uh, we applied to so many grants opportunities and I think our work was too political for them. So we were just like, you know, let's do it ourselves. <laughs> so we raised money through Kickstarter and we just, you know, created our own project. Um, so that's kind of um, my interest in collaborating. And of course, my partner, Puya, um, I collaborate with him. He's an animator and artist too. Um, and again, I feel like kind of pulling from everyone's skill sets to, to give voice to others. Um, that's where I'm at right now. I love this. I love this. Uh, the, uh, what both of you said about not wanting to talk to yourselves. Uh, and also this, this uh, the creativity, um, and especially the the bringing the art out of the museum. I love museums too, but a very small number of people go to them. So, like bringing art to the people and then making it activist art, uh, which has an intention um, as a kind of intervention into uh, whatever problems it is you're making art about. I just love that so much. Um, and of course, I even more love or just compound the love uh, that the two of you reached out to, to, to Vine Sanctuary to uh, let us know that you're, you were wanting to, 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 to expand uh, your ambit uh, to include non-human animals. And I'm so curious to know uh, the thinking behind that for each of you. Well, for me, it's been a long time coming. Uh, Think Again did a series of holiday cards for a while, which is some of our least known, but my most favorite work. We The first one we did was during the Clinton years, when immigration, when immigration, when welfare was revoked, or as they called it then, welfare reform. And we sent out a holiday card uh, talking about capitalist and consumer culture. And the tagline was, when did poverty become a crime? But, um, and the outside of the card said, peace among men, poverty among women. And it was, done in the style of a holiday card. And then we went into, we mailed them out, but we also went into stores and we swapped cards. We put our cards in boxes of holiday cards that were uh, traditional so that people would get a surprise. So the following year, we did a card around the Thanksgiving holiday for the holidays about the family gathering, which as some of us know, can be a contentious experience. And in that card, we dealt with a whole range of what do you say when your uncle says something racist, all kinds of things that happen at the table. But then the tagline there had to do with, you know, when somebody's passing the turkey, what do you say? And we were inviting people to stop eating meat. And the, then on the back, there's a funny um, tagline about, and you know, the equivalent of, don't give us any BS about 
animal being the best source of protein. We don't want to hear it. <laughs> um, so, so there's been that interest. And then as my own evolution changed, as we've talked about before, I'm one of many people who was a vegetarian for a long, long time, but continued to eat dairy until my awareness was dramatically increased. And, uh, and I have to say, I owe a debt to a dear friend of mine, Alexandra Isfahani Hammond. I feel like she's someone who's really helped broaden my education. And uh, then Netta, as she can tell you, is a relatively new mother. And we were on hiatus uh, during the period when my G daughter, as I call her, was first born and Netta was uh, getting used to being a new mom. And we just talked about this is a great time to reach out and just see what we can do to help an organization that we respect. We had done that previously. We did a very brief project where we reached out to Black Lives Matter and we did a brief project supporting them and getting a referendum passed in California about prison reform. So then Vine became the place to reach out to that we thought. And also, you know, in terms of collaboration, Patrice, the other thing is that both Think Again and my work with Netta, our work, we see it as that part of what we can do as artists is support people in the trenches. And that's part of what we can do. And then the benefit of that, beyond all the obvious rewards, is then we get to work with someone like you, who is an expert in a field that we're still learning about. And, and so it's a kind of perfect uh, opportunity for everyone. The one thing I know Netta could talk about this as well, but I will say there's a huge shift in when I started working collaboratively and now, which is to say that when David and I worked together, there was still that really omnipresent mythology of the flaky artist. And we were always, um, people were always flabbergasted that what we, we used to call what we did as visual analysis, but that we were educated, we were informed about the issues, we were articulate, we had ideas. And so now it's a different moment and a lot of organizations, particularly we have found organizations that were say founded in the 70s, a lot of that generation of leaders is retiring. They're also recognizing that the tactics we've all used, I include myself in this, for years in terms of activist work don't necessarily work anymore. And so we have found that organizations have been much more open to working with artists. Netta, I'm so curious uh, to know, uh, the, as they said, you might have more to say about the turn towards um, uh, uh, talking about working on questions of animals and particularly dairy um, as, a, as, a, as a relatively new mother. And I wanted you to invite you to follow up on that. Yeah, um, I think, well, first, I think in one of our conversations, I remember that we were both saying that, you know, we've lost faith in adult humans. <laughs> we wanted to make a project about, you know, animals and, and kind of educating kids, especially, uh, partially because, you know, I'm, I'm a new mom um, and just like thinking about creative ways of educating my own child. I'm always curious to kind of look around and see what's what's out there. Um, but also as a new mom, I, I tried uh, breastfeeding for almost a year and a half, which is which was the hardest thing that I've done. It was even harder than giving birth and like the whole pregnancy. Um, and I totally get it that not, you know, all moms want to do it. But I think during that process of breastfeeding, I finally realized how messed up the whole the whole you know dairy industry is um, because I was also producing milk so all of a sudden again after being you know years uh, of being vegetarian and um, just being proud of myself I just finally realized that I'm oh my god like I've been doing this whole thing wrong um, and this is someone else's food so I stopped eating dairy and I actually when I um, switched 
uh, my child's kind of, um, I, when I stopped breastfeeding, everyone were, were telling me that you can switch to cow's milk. And I did for a while for, for my child, but I stopped and um, because now, you know, there are all these other options of almond milk and oat milk. So I started using oat milk and she actually liked it better. Um, and then, so this whole thing kind of started this conversation between Essay and I, and we realized that, you know, there, there are all these mothers that could kind of relate to this whole process. And we could kind of look at that as, as um, a group of, audience that we could target with our work um and then of course we you know as they reached out to you and we met you and the whole really wonderful story about autumn that you told us um and i think just like um it would be an honor to kind of you know realize um and come up with a way to create a project that would highlight autumn's life uh but also could create awareness um about the dairy industry and how you know that's a huge huge part of this whole um, crisis about animal rights. And it's no accident that we selected Vine because of you um, being an LGBTQ led sanctuary. So that's very important to state. Yes. Thank you. And we're so excited uh, here at Vine by this collaboration and, and, and uh, I can't wait. Uh, to find out how it plays out, even 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 early in the process, just highlighting what we've said er already in this conversation about collaboration. I've loved the ways that ideas that we wouldn't have imagined have arisen in the course of conversation between the three of us. And so, uh, for others who are are wanting to. Uh, be more creative in their activism or their animal advocacy. I really want to highlight this idea of, of thinking together in conversation. And I also want, because uh, we're running low on time, but I want to really encourage activists to work with artists, artists to work with activists. And I'm wondering uh, if either or both of you have tips whether it's tips for artists who want to make more engaged work, uh, how do they, how, how should they go about doing that and interfacing with activists and activists who would like to, to incorporate the arts in some way into their work? Do you have any tips for them? Yeah, do you want to go first? Sure. I mean, that's something that I always talk with my students about that, you know, um, a lot of times artists feel intimidated to kind of make political work. Um, and I think they're just like being vulnerable. And, and um, I think also a lot of times um, people think that working collaboratively means that you should already go into meetings knowing what you want to do and just like tell them this is what I want to do versus it's like nothing like that. You have to like figure out the whole thing and, and the process of, you know, having a conversation. So just, um, making yourself vulnerable and reaching out to people, uh, for artists to reach out to nonprofits that are making work about um, topics that they actually care about. Um, and the other way around too, with um, for nonprofits to, you know, there are a lot of artists that are looking for job opportunities outside of the arts world. So putting, you know, creating positions um, that would allow creatives to, you know, come in and, and bring in another type of knowledge um, that would be visual arts. Um, I think those two things might, you know, those, those are my tips basically, basically. And I know SA might have a lot more to share. No, not terribly. I mean, I think that I lived through one other wave where there was a bit of openness uh, to political art and then of course, there was a long period where it was extremely not fashionable again. Um, I feel as though the ar artists just have to be willing to take a step away from the notion of celebrity and fame, and maybe you're not going to get your Guggenheim, and maybe you're not going to achieve this accolade or that accolade. Netta said something earlier that was important in terms of what was important important to us. And I always say that I'm much happier to go into someone's home 
and stumble upon a postcard on someone's refrigerator that I made 10 years ago than I am to show at the Museum of Modern Art. So I think for young artists who've been raised in an art school where there's a lot of emphasis on selling and celebrity and all of that, you've got to be willing to take a step away, leave your ego a bit at the door, and really commit yourself. And in terms of organizations, uh, the reason I brought up this prior wave of activism was during that time, there did start to be some hospitals, different kinds of organizations that created artists in residencies. There's a very well-known artist named Merle Eucles, who's been an artist in residence at the Department of Sanitation in New York for decades. Uh, so I feel artists, uh, organizations, still do to a large degree not really recognize what artists can contribute. So I'd like to see organizations maybe just uh, educate themselves a little bit more about what the collaborative possibilities are. All of that is really great advice. And, and I thank you for that. I thank you uh, for all of your amazing work. Again, if, if, if you missed the introduction or forgot the names, I'm talking, I've been talking with S.A. Bachman and Netta Muripur of the Louder Than Words Art Collective, uh, each of whom has worked with other collectives such as Think Again and the Part Collective. And we've been talking about creativity in activism, collaboration, conversation, bringing art uh, to people, bringing people into conversation with each other. And I think that this is something that we can do in so many ways, uh, whether or not we have formal artist credentials uh, or formally think of ourselves as activists. So what I'm really hoping uh, is that if, if you've been listening in on this conversation, that you'll start some conversations of your own, whether that is with people you know who like art, people you know who do activism, uh, people with whom you're doing activism together about how you could bring people into conversation, maybe using some creative ways to get conversations started, even if there doesn't happen to be an artist collective with whom you can collaborate, and also engaging in more conversations uh, and more collaborations yourself as you're thinking through your strategies and your activities. Thank you again so much, S.A. and Netta, for joining us. Any final thoughts? Well, we are every bit as excited as you are. And we are very thrilled to be able to start to brainstorm with you about the ways we can honor Autumn's life. And so far, everything has just been a pleasure. So we're grateful to you for welcoming us so warmly. Wonderful. And, and, and I am grateful to you. And I'm also grateful to everybody who's tuning in, uh, not only for listening in on our conversation, but for all of the work that you have done or will do uh, for animals, for humans, for the planet. I'm Patrice Jones from Vine Sanctuary. Thanks to our producer, Sarah Jane Blum. Visit us online at vinesanctuary.org to check out previous episodes of In Context, to which you can subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you. Bye. Bye.